By the 1820s, the streets around the Thames had become the centre of the world's largest traffic jam, and something had to be done. Building a bridge was no good. They'll get in the way of the boats. The only other option was to go under. Starting south of the river, the idea was to attempt the impossible, to tunnel under the Thames to Wapping in the East End. Jill Howard is a volunteer at the Brunel Museum. So building a tunnel in the 1800s under the Thames, had anybody done that before? Never been done under a navigable river anywhere in the world before. So whose bright idea was that then? A man called Mark Brunel, who was our famous engineer Isambard Kingdom Brunel's father. Mark came up with this completely brilliant idea yeah. of a huge iron frame called a tunnelling shield. And it's said he got the idea from a worm, ship's worm. And what it does is it eats the wood okay. and then it secretes it out behind it. In February 1825, work started. Right. The first step was to sink a 15-metre shaft into the ground. The 1,000-tonne structure took five months to sink deep enough so the tunnelling shield could be lowered into place. And that was the easy part. Brunel's original shaft is still in place today. Wow, this is impressive. After the initial excavation, Brunel's tunnelling shield was put in position. Each miner stood in a different compartment inside, digging away soil while bricklayers lined the tunnel behind as the shield slowly moved forward. How was conditions down there? Because that must have been quite grim, though. It was terrible. Just think of those poor miners coming down to dark every day. And the Thames, in 1825, was the biggest open sewer in the world. That must have stunk down there. Terrible. So how long did it take them to get from this side to the east side? Ah, that's the story, because <laughs> it was meant to take three years. That was the estimate. It ended up taking 18 years. 18 years? It had started off well. After a year, they were already a third of the way across. But then the tunnel flooded. Isambar Kingdom Brunel used a diving bell to investigate the cause. He found a large hole in the riverbed, which had to be filled, and the water pumped out of the tunnel. They got started again, and things weren't going too badly mm -hmm. until January 1828. And then the same thing happened again, oh. only this time much worse. The river really broke through, and so much water came in that a wooden platform collapsed. Two miners, Bull and Collins, were drowned. The third man managed to get free from under the platform. It took another six years with three more floods and another man drowned to get the last third of the way. So when they got to the East End, they must have had a party. Yes, when the tunnel finally opened, they had bands playing and people marching through. Yeah. It was a, a great event and lots and lots of people came. Even Queen Victoria came to walk through it. Despite the hype, the tunnel was not a commercial success. There was no money left to provide access for the horse-drawn vehicles and their cargo it was intended for. Instead, souvenir sellers and entertainers took over. So when did the train go underneath here? And that was in the late 1860s. OK. It's the oldest bit of underground line in the world, I believe. One and a half million people a year travel through. Uh, they'll be over the moon. They'll be thrilled, wouldn't they? Yeah. I think so. <laughs>